Hey guys, it's me, your best friend Joe. Welcome to a new Sims 4 series on this channel. This is going to be my vampire series, which will obviously be connected with the new vampire pack that came out a few weeks ago. This series takes place in the same universe as my socials of Windenburg. They're still in here, but this series is going to follow a new set of Sims that are vampires. Now, the Forgotten Hollow is the new neighborhood, and you may be thinking, Joseph, where are your new vampire Sims? Like, th these houses are empty, empty. Empty. These look like garbage sims that you wouldn't create. This is some old dude. Where are your sims? Well, they don't live in Forgotten Hollow. My vampires are city vampires. They live in San Myshuno. I also have the city stuff package, which is where my next like main sim series is going to take place. But my vampires, as you can probably tell, the ghouls, they live in a penthouse area on in a Victorian mansion built where a penthouse is supposed to be. When you get the city pack, there's like a penthouse right here. Let's go ahead and play them. But I just really did not want them to, you know, I didn't want them to be like modern. I wanted them to be comfortable in like, you know, something they're used to. So I knocked down the penthouse and I constructed a, a Victorian haunted mansion in its place. This is actually probably one of my most extensive builds. Jesus fucking Christ, the camera moves really fucking fast. But before I show you like all about the mansion, I will uh, introduce you to the ghouls. As you can see, there's three of them. The first one you'll probably recognize from my, um, Monster High Let's Play. I turned my main character from that. You guys wanted her to become a sim. So this is Laura Vanderboo. Actually, let's just go into uh, create a sim and I'll show you all of them together. Whee! Like I said, this is Laura Vanderboo. All of these uh, new vampires are young adults. As you can see with her traits. Ooh, give it. Girl, she's serving. As you can see with her traits, she wants to be leader of the pack. Um, she's very gregarious, ambitious, uh, self-assured. She's an insider. It was the new way of walking that was introduced with this pack, which I just had to let her do. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> they also finally introduced the ability to have like just like black hole eyes, which Laura Vanderboo had in my Monster High series. She is essentially the brains of the operation, the brains of the ghoul household, and it's her dream to become the most powerful vampire ever, which she actually already is. I'll show you guys all of her like, um, powers in a minute. But her main goal is to seduce and destroy the Count, who's like the main head vampire. So they each have a dark form. Shit, there is a glitch going on right now that adds all of these like unwanted facial features. So I guess I could show you these anyway. With vampires, you get all of these different like vampire brows, vampire sockets, eye details, and she's not supposed to have these. She is clean and clear and under control. No furrowed brows. None of my vampires are allowed to have wrinkles. None of this mouth wrinkles, and then these cheek wrinkles. Gorgeous. So basically her vampire form gives her this like stunning eyeshadow and this incredible outfit. Next we have a familiar character, as someone who you might be familiar with, I don't know. This is Joseph Bloodsong, not Joseph Birdsong. Joseph Bloodsong. He's actually a clone of my Joseph Sim that Kim Barley made, who turned into a vampire, and now he lives with them. So he's freshly a vampire. He's sort of like a fresh-faced vampire. He's still sort of figuring out what it means to be a vampire. And he's still got all of the same, like, aspirations and stuff as my uh, Joseph Sim. He's also trying to deal with, like, this new vampire face stuff, because he's used to having, like, flawless skin. And so, like, this is definitely a transition for him. And when creating their outfits, I try to use as much of the new vampire stuff as possible. Obviously, there's not really a vampire athletic outfit. So his colors, as you can see, are like red and black. That's sort of the aesthetic he's going for. And his vampire form is very snazzy. He essentially looks the same, except now he has like bright purple neon circle lenses. And the third member of the ghoul's household is frankly Deadenstein, which uh, I don't know. It's supposed to be funny. It's probably not. It's supposed to be like Frankenstein, but like She's frankly dead inside, aren't we all? Her situation is she is the daughter of uh, Frankenstein's monster, and so she's supposed to be a monster, but she is a vampire instead, so she's a huge disappointment to her family. And her colors are like this teal and black, generally. She's definitely a quirky vampire. She does want to be popular, but she's a vegetarian. So trouble's a brewing. She can't drink blood. Her vampire form is very, like, old school. God damn it, this fucking glitch. 
such. I swear to God, I do not want anyone in my Sims town to have wrinkles. No, no. She does have these like cuts on her face. They're meant to be more like like stitching because she's like Frankenstein's monster's daughter. Somebody better call Yves Saint Laurent because she is popping. So there is your really quick rundown of the ghoul family. If we take a look at, um, you can have vampire abilities. I have cheated, obviously, to max out Laura Vanderboos. She has every single ability. She can turn into a bat. Sun doesn't affect her. And she can, like, allure people and, like, make them talk to themselves. And she has zero weaknesses. She has absolutely no weaknesses. So she is technically already the most powerful vampire. Now she has, just has to, like, let everybody know. Let's have her, uh, transform into her dark form. Noise. Noise. Let's go have her practice her vampire stuff on Frankly. She's so dumb. She won't even know what's happening. Let's insult her fang size. Frankly doesn't really have any fangs. Ooh, she's going at her. You can also do a vampiric spar, which is when they have like a battle. Okay, they've decided to do it in uh, the opening hallway. Ooh, here it goes! Okay, okay, okay. This is supposed, I guess this is supposed to be very like, you know what, I didn't see Twilight, but this is just what I imagined. Let's see if we can capture a really good moment here of them. Okay, okay, I wanna see this face, I wanna see this face. She is going in for the kill. She has fucking had it with Laura Vanderboo insulting her. Maybe frankly, it will end up, you know, trying to fight back against all of the drama. Oh my God, there's already so much drama. I can't handle the drama. Oh. Lara Vanderboo definitely won that battle, though. Is she gonna help her up? Oh, look, they're besties anyway, though. Oh, I did- I've never even seen this before. You can slay a vampire. Ah, slay vampire! <laughs> Has anyone noticed I'm gay yet? Is that a secret here? Let's do another quick little spell. Let's cause, uh frankly, to hallucinate. She always has to walk so far away to cast any of the spells. Here we go. Okay, yeah, she's got, she, she done gone cray. She's just talking to herself. She's a simple person. She's happy like this, probably. I guess I could show you guys the actual fucking mansion now. The mansion is probably one of the most extensive builds I've ever done. The bad thing about it being, like, on top of the building and in the penthouse, though, is that I can't really raise the foundation, and I can't have a basement. You do, of course, have to have an elevator to get up here. So the elevator is in a separate building, and then you basically just walk around, and uh, you can enter the mansion. Doesn't look very fucking ominous when the sun is shining right up there. There are gravestones everywhere. There's, like, brambles and grass. You enter into this uh, main hallway area. I basically tried to decorate the mansion with as much of the vampire pack stuff as possible. The dining room is off to the side. Some, like, cute vampire decorations. The house is sort of a fixer Upper, but you know, like it has its charms. They don't do a lot of cooking because they mostly drink blood, but frankly, it's gonna have to figure out what she's gonna do. A little storage area right off next to the kitchen and a, a small downstairs bathroom as well. Oh good, it looks like frankly finally snapped out of it. Oh, are they gonna make up? The living room is also on the first floor. It's decorated with like a lot of quirky little things. There is a little bar in the corner and there's one more room next to the living room. And I kind of made this room just because like if if any of them get pregnant we're gonna need like more room to do stuff so at the moment it's like an organ room Laura Vanderboo is actually already a master at the organ they actually what can she do play haunting music go for it girlfriend oh yes oh little ghosties flying out of there oh she got bored and got on her phone ain't that just our generation on the second floor is where all of the bedrooms are Joseph's bedroom is the uh, simplest he doesn't even really get a bed he just gets a coffin which they do sleep in their coffin so they can hibernate or sleep or nap. Frankly's room is also like pretty generic, but she does have a regular bed, but she also has a secret door which can be opened to reveal her coffin that she actually sleeps in. Oh, and they can also have sex in their coffins, which I don't know, just fulfills some sort of like bizarre fantasy. I shouldn't talk about this. And Laura Vanderboo, of course, has the nicest, best room. Plenty of room in here for a bassinet if something happens there. And she also has a secret bookcase that goes into this little hallway, which leads upstairs, where her coffin is. Of course, there's the bathroom. There's nothing like super special here, but there's another staircase that leads to a little upstairs outdoor patio where uh, their jacuzzi is. So there is uh, the ghoul's penthouse mansion. Very chic, blends in really well with the rest of the city, I would say at least. And I'll actually put a copy of it up for download in the community gallery if uh, you want to take a closer look at it. Let's go ahead and have uh, Laura hide her dark form. Gorgeous. So this is her 
vampiric run. Will she run here? Yes, okay, there's the super fast run. She can teleport somewhere as mist, which just is basically like her vampire animation. Where the fuck does she fucking go? Okay, God, I was like, I swear to God, if she just disappeared, that's just my fucking luck. And then she can also turn into a bat, which is not really as cool as I thought. The bat just sort of flies up and disappears and then floats back down. It's basically the same as the mist thing, but like with a an extra bat. Let's go ahead and visit uh, the Count so we can just, you know, start seducing him so we can murder him. So the head vampire lives in Forgotten Hollow. It's Count Vladislaus, Vladislaus Stroud, Ivy, I'm not Roman. I don't know what that fucking number is. Joseph, Bloodsong, and frankly, Deadenstein will come with. This mansion is pretty cool too. I got several ideas for mine from this mansion, but obviously my mansion turned out better. Okay, so I believe they already know each other. Let's get to know him. We need to like sweeten him up. Actually, what we're gonna do, we're gonna create an alluring visage around ourselves. Okay, so I believe what this does is it makes people like you more. See, he's already getting a little loopy about it. And we're gonna do one more little vampire trick. We're gonna influence emotions. We're gonna send out a burst of flirtiness. This should just make like a little, a little burst here. Okay, yes, okay, so everyone should probably be feeling flirty. We will uh, flirt, we will ask if he's single. Laura has learned that Vladdy, Vladdy is single. Of course he is. Ooh, he does not like Joseph Bloodsong. He's thinking about putting a bag over his head. I could see that. Can we do a vampiric spar? I just wanna like maybe put him in his place. Oh, they're actually having an awkward encounter now, okay. Uh, I do not have any fucking idea where he went. God, if I could just poof like that in real life to get away from people, that is like my ideal. Seriously though, where the fuck did he go? God, he just was fucking done with us, wasn't it? Okay. Maybe we should knock on the door and uh, let's go inside and find him. Oh, he just wanted to go practice organ. That's fine. It'll let me mentor him. How much is this gonna piss him off? Oh, Lara is so upset at this shitty music. She's got taste and this is not to her taste. We're gonna try to vampiric spar again. Here we go. It's going down now. Now we're gonna see who- Ooh, look at his vampire form. He's really fucking creepy. Okay, we're gonna see who the head vampire is now. Looks like Laura's winning. Okay, I just, she just seems like she got a little beat up a little bit. Okay, okay. Oh, and she comes out victorious. So far, she's undefeated in all of her vampiric spars. And back they go. Let's ask him a risque question. Flirt him up a little bit. Blow him a kiss. And now they're gonna have their first kiss. Oh, how, ooh, she, she didn't even actually touch his lips. <laughs> Me too, girl, same girl with it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't either, quite frankly. After all, she is just trying to get close to him so she can murder him later. All right, well, you know what, guys? That is gonna be the end of the very first episode of my Sims 4 Vampire series. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying this series so far. If you are, feel free to give this video a thumbs up, and I will see you guys next time. Bye, guys.